There are a lot of different mechanics within League of Legends, from ones that are more or less easy to handle such as point and click abilities to other more, how should I say, aggravating gimmicks like on target ability. I've gone through a good number of topics last year, but one that's been subject for a debate a lot recently is on a gameplay element that's always been around, but only now have people realized the extent at which it can lead to uncontrollable situations. Reset mechanics, abilities that have a way to partially or completely reset their cooldowns, allowing repeated usage of them in a short period of time, leading to devastating consequences for the enemy team. It's not surprising why this has become a point of concern lately. As stated already, it's always been a thing. Some of our oldest champions have reset mechanics, even going as far back as Ryze's very first official version. Arcane Mastery would refund a second and change on all of his abilities whenever using one of said abilities. It's not an unfamiliar occurrence, and champions with low cooldown abilities they could spam have been around since day one. However, much like how healing, shielding, mobility, stealth, and untarget ability have gone from little quirks we see on random champions to being ubiquitous, reset mechanics are on the rise, much to the dismay of everyone who has to go up against them. Of the 20 newest champions, 8 of them have something in their kit that either lowers or refreshes their ability cooldowns. What's even more alarming is when we narrow it down to the 10 newest champions, that number still holds up at 5. Vex, Akshan, Gwen, Viego, and Sumira all have something that makes one or more of their abilities come back faster, which is what leads us to the creation of this video and two major questions that need to be addressed. Why do recent mechanics feel so frustrating to go up against, and more importantly, is the abundance of it a negative influence to the game? To start, let's categorize the different types of cooldown resets in the game. First, there are abilities with conditional resets, something they can do to accelerate the cooldown of an ability through repeated actions, such as auto-attacking. A classic example of this would be Master Yi's Alpha Strike. Ordinarily, it has a very long cooldown of 18 to 16 seconds. Understandably so, given how much damage it can do, especially against a single target, as well as it being a point-and-click dash with a second of on-target ability. Alpha Strike does have a way to artificially lower its cooldown though, as basic attacks on hit reduce its current timer by one second. Given that Master Yi's double strike allows him extra hits in between his normal attack pattern, we can infer that he's supposed to build attack speed and or on hit effects. Another example would be Zack's Unstable Matter. Whenever he picks up a blob of goo from his other abilities, his W's current cooldown lowers by one second. Olaf's Undertow refunds a large portion of its cooldown if he picks up the axe after it lands. A lot of champions have fun, fancy conditions to play around with, and it's the largest group of reset-based mechanics. Although, I don't think we should call it a reset given it's only a partial refund of cooldown. The next group consists of abilities with passive resets, meaning the ability can refresh its cooldown by simply existing or through the champion's natural abilities. The line can be pretty blurry, but essentially rather than a condition, it's just always there. Ryze demonstrates this the best, his overload immediately refreshes whenever casting Spell Flux or Rune Prison. Kiana has something similar with her Q and W. Pantheon's Comet Spear immediately refunds 60% of its cooldown if he uses the melee thrust instead of the javelin throw. That makes it so he has a strong melee trade tool without making his long range poke too oppressive. With the advent of her little mini rework last year, Sona gradually lowers her basic ability's cooldowns. This ability haste is calculated apart from her natural ability haste acquired through items, runes, what have you. The easiest way to describe this category is that the cooldowns passively reset or lower just by existing. And finally, we arrive at the third group, Kill Resets. This category is where all the hate for reset mechanics originates from. Champions with abilities that reset if they score the killing blow and or a takedown. Unlike the first group, who usually have abilities that offer flat or percentage reductions, 1 second, 2 seconds, 50%, and so on, these abilities often fully reset. I think we all know which ones go here. Now normally, the two metrics that limit ability usage are mana and cooldowns. Many champions are kept in balance strictly because of those two metrics. If you played Ultra Rapid Fire, you get to witness the horrors of what happens when resource management and cooldowns are thrown out the window. To give someone an ability that has the potential to be used multiple times in quick succession is definitely not something you should give out lightly. It would have to come with a mountain of restrictions, be relatively weak in effect, or have a very difficult condition to achieve that reset. I think many of us have little to no qualms about conditional resets. Even those with an easy one like Kai'Sa, Gragas, or Amumu aren't thought of as overly ridiculous because they refund only a small portion of the cooldown. Going back to Master Yi, it's not really the auto-attack reset on Alpha Strike that makes it annoying, it's the 70% cooldown refund on Takedown from Highlander that's the issue. With the 16 second cooldown, it still takes you like 8 auto-attacks to reset it through that way, but if you score a Takedown on someone, you instantly refund like 12 seconds, meaning you only have to attack 2 or 3 times before Q is up and running again. Reset mechanics are frustrating for a number of reasons, the most notable one being who has access to them. Very few tanks or supports have ability resets if they have any at all. Yet the class with the highest number of resets happens to be the most disliked one, Slayers, and that's no coincidence. 
Assassins and Skirmishers, the two subclasses that make up the Slayer archetype have an abundance of reset mechanics and 90% of them are full ability resets. It seems almost humorous that we would give resets with a takedown condition to the two subclasses designed to have the highest kill pressure in the game. It was my understanding that conditions should be difficult to achieve, or at least out of your way. For example, Draven's Blood Rush cooldown resets whenever he catches a spinning axe, but in doing so, that can make your movements rather predictable as enemies can see where your axes will be just like you. Olaf isn't a very fast champion, so sometimes he doesn't have the mobility or time to pick up his axe if he misses it. Any champion with an easy condition to meet receives only a partial cooldown refund of a couple seconds at most. Scoring a killing blow or a takedown is not a tall task, considering slayers have no trouble one-shotting priority targets in the blink of an eye. I'm sure it's not the reset mechanic itself that makes a champion so much more heart-wrenching to deal with, it's how easy they can get access to it that's the problem. Darius's Noxian Guillotine is a very threatening ability, but it's offset by the fact that it's not very consistent. To get the reset, you yourself have to land the killing blow with that ultimate. If you don't calculate the damage correctly, you might leave them hanging with 1 HP, thus preventing you from resetting. Despite having his passive 5 stacks buff, you still have to walk up to people and hit them at least once. The conditions to getting a 5-man pentadonk on Darius is a lot harder to execute on when you remember he's a very slow-moving juggernaut. Now let's give the same conditions to someone with a lot more burst damage while making it more lenient. All Viego has to do to myrtleize your entire team is get one single assist. That's it. Just one assist. He doesn't even have to kill the champion, let alone score the killing blow with Heartbreaker. He can actually miss his ultimate and still get it reset. He just needs to hit you with something. Viego then assimilates the soul of whoever he takes down and gets free cast of his ultimate over and over and over again. What's even more amusing is that other abilities with reset mechanics exactly like Noxie and Guillotine are still more forgiving to use. Case in point, Death From Below, a dash area attack that instantly executes all enemy champions under a certain amount of health, resetting if someone dies within it. What makes Death From Below so much more deadly? For one, it's a 750 range dash on its own, meaning it has a very large cast radius. Not to mention, Pike is a very fast champion so he can make a beeline for a low health target faster than most can usually react. Secondly, it does the same amount of damage no matter what the circumstance. Darius is slow, has to run up to his opponent and get 5 stacks on them before he can use his ult, which doesn't have a very large cast radius. And of course, lest we forget, Noxian Guillotine has to explicitly deal the finishing blow to reset. If his opponent doesn't die within the next 0.15 seconds, which basically means instantaneously, you don't get that reset. Also during that time, someone else on your team might kill them before you get a chance to. Pike's ultimate doesn't even have to kill the target to reset, they just have to die within the X. Actually, he gets rewarded for being KS'd, two bags of gold instead of one. That's the problem concerning a lot of new champions and the reset mechanics, they all have extremely powerful skills to activate simply by waiting for people to die. The impact of the ability in question, plus the ease of access, is what makes these champions so vehemently despised. Sure, we can make the argument that they're ultimate abilities, they're supposed to be deadly, that is a valid rebuttal. But to counter that, let me introduce you to Irelia's Blade Surge, a fast point and click dash that deals damage, applies on hit effects, and heals her for a portion of her AD that resets whenever she hits a marked enemy or if they die during the dash. Those of you who played or played against old Irelia might remember how inconsistent her Q was. Just like Darius, if it didn't explicitly deal the killing blow on the target, meaning if the minion died while you were dashing to it, you wouldn't reset your cooldown. Now they changed it to where it would reset no matter what if her target died. What's even more ridiculous is that Blade Surge does bonus damage to minions, allowing her to one-shot them after getting a single item. Each caster minion turns into a free ability reset, extending her threat bubble indefinitely. There's no need for precision, timing, or calculations. You just have to press Q on a minion and it's a free gap closer plus heal. That establishes the two primary issues surrounding takedown resets. They're given to champions who specialize in killing people, making it a win-win situation for them, as they were going to kill their targets anyway. And the conditions to require that reset are extremely lax. They themselves don't even have to kill the target. A single auto attack is enough to do the trick. It's these two aspects of reset mechanics that usher along the narrative of overloaded champions with endless uptime, the one I've been criticizing for all of 2021. What is the main weakness burst champions have that allows you to counter them? It's not crowd control, every champion gets countered by crowd control. It's cooldowns. Since all of their damage is frontloaded, there's a window of a few seconds where they're completely vulnerable. Once Fizz uses his Q, W, E, and ultimate, there's a good 2-3 seconds where if you manage to survive his burst damage, you can launch a counterattack right back at him before his playful trickster comes back off cooldown. Reset mechanics drastically lower that window of vulnerability to almost nothing. Let's look at Vex. She plays a lot like a burst mage diver hybrid, tossing her shadow surge then dashing into the middle of the enemy team and using her personal space to fear everyone before unloading the rest of her damage. Say you're playing Garen and you're waiting for her to exhaust all her damage so you can put her in the dirt. 
But during that engage, your Caitlyn dies. Now she gets to tag another Shadow Surge onto someone and blow them up before you have a chance to do anything. Vex is supposed to be a burst mage, someone with high cooldowns that you can exploit. But because she has a reset mechanic built into her ult, she can keep fighting as long as someone dies from her initial engage, an outcome that is quite certain given that she has a free 1.5 second AoE fear on everyone around her the moment she goes in. Samira is a marksman. Prevailing Wisdom knows that marksmen are pretty easy to stamp out the moment you get on top of them. Let's say you're playing Vi and she dashes into your team. You blow your ultimate to cancel the Infernal trigger, but one of her teammates kills the low health Janna. Just for getting one single tick of damage on your support, the enemy Samira now has a free dash to get the hell away from you. Her window of vulnerability was completely erased just like that. What could you have done there? See, as someone who studied game design, there's one rule I honor very much. You do not cross lines in the sand that you drew yourself. If you create classes with strengths and weaknesses, you have to honor them no matter what. Every now and then there might be an instance where you create exceptions, but if you do, that character's entire design has to revolve around that gimmick. Divers are champions designed to rush headfirst into battle, overwhelming their opponents through sheer force. But since their damage is frontloaded, if they fail to win the fight off their initial engage, their usefulness decreases the longer a fight draws out for. After Jarvan uses his EQ ultimate combo, he has to hope that he and his teammates can finish the job before Cataclysm's walls break off. Olaf can rush into a fight with Reckless Abandon thanks to his ultimate, but he has to finish off his opponent before his ultimate goes away. Then you have Irelia, someone with the same rushdown potential, yet she has the DPS and dueling power of a skirmisher. Assassins are supposed to be one and done champions. After they dispatch their targets, they usually have to leave the battlefield and wait for their cooldowns to come back up. Traditional assassins like Evelyn, Talon, and Fizz respect their weak points and make sure to keep themselves out of harm's way. But then you have Katarina and Pike who can stay in a fight long after they burn their abilities because their abilities come back up right away. A keystone of League of Legends combat is threat management. It's knowing when a champion is dangerous and when they aren't. You've heard this before. Fiddlesticks no alt, Kai'Sa no flash, Malphite no alt, Jax no TP, Blitzcrank no exhaust. Knowing when something is up and when something is down can completely change the mentality a team has when entering a fight. When you introduce reset mechanics that trigger so easily like that, it becomes difficult to evaluate just how dangerous Viego, Pike, Irelia, Katarina, Akshan, and such really are. Thus, to err on the side of caution, you have to assume they're always dangerous even when they're not. All Viego needs is a single soul to start dunking on everyone. All Akshan needs is for someone to die in order for him to swing around everywhere and execute low health targets. All Irelia needs is a few minions. All Pike needs is a low health target. Riot designs these champions because they're fun to watch and play. I can agree on that. It's a lot more hype watching a Viego get resets on resets than a Garen who charges at someone and spin to wins. That is until you have the misfortune of going up against one and you realize how seemingly impossible it is to deal with these champions dashing and annihilating entire team comps. I have no problem with reset mechanics being in the game. They're essential to the fluidity of a champion's gameplay, as long as you give them the right conditions or proper sacrifices to trigger that reset. Scoring a takedown isn't a condition that warrants resetting ultimates or entire champion kits. That's exactly what they were going to do regardless, you're basically selectively rewarding champions for playing the game normally. At the very least, make the timing window strict like how it is for Darius. Vex should not have a 6 second window for someone to die, it should be like 3 or 2. Viego shouldn't get free uses of Heartbreaker on souls he didn't score kills on. Actually screw it, he shouldn't have a reset period, he already gets extra abilities from whoever he possesses. It's a case by case basis, but the bottom line is, Riot is not only giving too many reset mechanics, they're also making it too easy to acquire those resets. In my humble opinion, the only abilities that should be allowed to have full resets are the ones that aren't very strong to begin with, like once again, Draven's Blood Rush. It's just a short lasting movement and attack speed buff on a pretty tough condition. That's fair for me. Everything else should be partial refunds at best. I actually like what they did with Lux's Final Spark a few years back where it would refund 30-50% to 50 of the cooldown if Final Spark hit at least one enemy champion that died within 1.75 seconds. It had a very strict time window and doesn't completely reset, only partially refunds. They took it away of course, but I think that's how it should be for most of these champions. Anyways, I think we're gonna end it off here because the video is starting to get ranty. I think my throat's giving out on me too, so let me know what your thoughts are on recent mechanics in the comments down below. If you believe they're overpowered, or if you're someone who thinks they're fine, then I'd like to know why as well. For now, if you enjoyed, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe to show your support. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server, and check out my previous discussion videos after this one. But until next time, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.